honor of just simply introducing our speaker to you today. I see the numbers continue to rise. They continue to rise, continue to invite people because they do not want to miss out on what's in store today. It is time for everyone to get their wellness checkup in so many different areas. So with that being said, I get to introduce your host for today, the founder of Freedom by Design, Dr. Katrina Flukas. She's an executive director with Connect. She is a realtor, a wife, a mom, and a woman of God, most importantly. In 2018, Katrina's faith walk led her to expand her reach into helping others. It was so much purpose in that. And you guys are going to be here to witness that purpose today, the passion, the serving others and supporting others, especially those who are in situations that seem to be stacked against the odds. How many of us are in this call find ourselves in a situation where things may be stacked against the odds? But guess what, y'all? Help is on the way. God implanted Freedom by Design, this movement in her womb, and she birthed that thing out into principles. Those principles are encourage, engage, and empower. I switched them up because she says engage, encourage, and empower, but today we're going to encourage today by engaging and empowering. So Katrina has over 15 years in professional development and leadership. She has been a featured speaker in network marketing fields, reaching and guiding new associates as far as development and leadership and training. She teaches people how to be effective. She has hosted a biannual right here in Atlanta, Woman of Power event. She does Facebook Lives. If you're not on there, please get on there every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. She does Facebook Live events where she speaks directly to your soul every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Katrina lives right here outside of Metro Atlanta with her husband, Frank, and her son, Kenan Humphrey Jr. So without further ado, please welcome your host for today and the founder of Freedom by Design, none other than Dr. Katrina King Flukas. Welcome, guys. Good morning, good morning, or should I say good afternoon, everybody. I'm so excited, and thank you so much, Bernadette, for um, welcoming me to the event. Um, guys, I can't say enough about Bernadette. She is my friend. She's a prayer partner. She's an accountability partner, and I'm so grateful for her and um, support her supporting the Freedom by Design movement. So this afternoon, it's a house call. Now, I know some of you probably were like, Katrina, what are you talking about? Doctors are not making house calls. That was back in the day. So let me just give a little perspective and <clears throat> a foundation of where this whole house call thing came from. You see, um, I do a lot of meditating, praying, and just um, spending a lot of time with God, especially in this season. And he dropped that thing in my spirit. And he said, you know, there are so many people that are out there sick. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I know people are sick, but they're going to the doctor. You know, I'm not that kind of doctor. And he was like, no, I need you to bring them to me. So yes, you're a doctor of education, but I need you to bring my people to me. I need you to get some folks together so we can talk about what's going on. And I said, okay, you know, I get it. I understand. I started praying about that thing. And me and my prayer partner started talking about it and saying, okay, well, what does this mean? Because we are in a state of emergency, many of us. Many of us are sick and we didn't even know it. You know, yeah, I know we got the COVID-19 thing going on. But when I talk about sick, a Bernadette kind of alluded to it. She talked about that spiritual, mental, that emotional thing. You know, what's going on with so many of us? And I thought about it. I said, you know, COVID has us quarantined. It has us at home. It has us in a social distancing period or a physical distancing period. But many of us were actually sick prior to this. We just didn't know that we were sick because we were so busy ripping and running and going about day to day our um, busy little lives that we became asymptomatic to actually what was going on. But it was deep down. It wasn't something that could be seen with the eye. It was what was inside of us. And as I started just processing this thing, I said, okay, Lord, I hear you. I feel you. Because I thought about Matthew 9 and 12. And, it's, and Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but it's the sick. And he went on to say, for I have not come for the righteous, but for the sinner. So that's us. That's why we're sick. We don't even realize that we got the best doctor in the world, but we're busy, many of us, trying to go around and heal and take care of and fix ourselves. So today, family, I have the pleasure of bringing, some, bringing three powerful speakers before you, 
And yeah, we're in this period of, I always say physical distancing because socially I feel like we still need to connect. There is definitely a reason for us to connect with one another because it's a lot going on. Many of us need healing, but we're trying to hide. We're trying to go into a dark place. And when you go into a dark place and try to seek healing, you're not gonna find it there. We end up trying to climb out and it's like, you know what, I can't get out on my own. You're right, you can't get out on your own. Our actions probably took us into some situations where we made ourselves sick, for lack of better words, but we have the best doctor who is going to bring us healing. Our friends will help, but he's going to bring the healing that we need. So I'm excited this morning as I get to share my friends with you and their friends, their business partners in a whole lot of different ways. And I'm going to start with someone who is near and dear to my heart. This young lady I have known now for over 20 plus years. She is a mother. She is a woman of God. She is a powerhouse. She actually um, shared something very near and dear to my heart, but we'll get into that later. But I want to tell you a little bit about her background. She's an educator like myself, 17 years. She's a trainer, a facilitator, a professional photographer, and an entrepreneur, both brick and mortar um, businesses. And she's the mother to two beautiful young ladies. And most importantly, not only is she just my friend, but she is the true definition of a friend. Guys, let me welcome Miss Goldie Love. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon at this point. I first want to begin by thanking everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Katrina, for allowing me to be a part of this event. I am super excited. I am in need of a house call. You know, I have missed, much like everyone else, I've missed engaging with physically with everyone. So this is a wonderful opportunity to receive a taste of the medicine that I have been missing. You know, I had a friend ask me, out of all the things that you miss, and all the things that, you know, our stores, our favorite shopping, our favorite lunches, what do you miss? And I truly miss the opportunity to fellowship with believers of Jesus Christ. I miss that eye contact from across the way at church when even if I don't say it, you can look in my eyes and I can look in yours and we can say to one another, it's going to be okay. There's nothing like a look from another believer, a look from someone who is going through or has gone through what you've gone through that reminds you, you are in the right place at the right time and you are and will receive what God has for you. So I am super excited to be here. I just wanted to take a few minutes to share with, all, with you all, not who I am, but what I am because of my journey and where I have decided to walk with God. And when I say I've decided, he always had a decision for me. I cannot say that I always knew and trusted it. And in this season, my trust has expounded and has grown in such a way that it, it caught me so off guard it's almost like I slid into it, you know, like a slide when you're at the, you know, you're at the amusement park and you, you sit on that brown little tarp and you slide. It happened so fast that I found myself wrapped in this space. And I just wanted a few minutes to share with you all what it was. In 2009, I found myself divorced, um, heartbroken, um, financially bankrupt. Um, I had two little girls. My girls were two and three at the time, my idea of what I believed and who I believed I should be was gone. I thought I did everything correct. I went to school, I went to my undergraduate degree, I, I waited, I got married. I, I kind of checked off all the badges. I had my own little Girl Scout badge of accomplishments for life. You know, I, I waited and then it went wrong. Why me? What? why I, I did it right why me not really questioning god because at that time i really didn't talk to him in terms of being my father i went to him in help so he was he bailed me out instead of me going to him first for direction and when i i questioned well what happens now i had a choice to make i could either go backwards 
fear or I could go forward in faith and figure it out. Well, I split the middle. I went forward fearfully. Not fair. Not fair to myself, not fair to the individuals in my life, and not fair for what God had promised me and I just refused to hear. I, so I, I went forward. I, I moved in a space for seven years of, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to do it this way. You know what? If I just get a husband, I'll be fine. If I just create a space where I can make the story look good, I'll be fine. So I went through in hopes of looking for a soulmate, and I really found nothing but wound mate. I connected myself to individuals in friendships and in relationship to individuals who were hurt the same way I was hurt, disappointed the same way I was disappointed. If you were abandoned and I was abandoned, oh, we can be friends. And we worshiped disappointment, abandonment, doubt, lack of love. And, and we grew these great moments in this space. But then when they grew out of hurt, the friendship ended. Well, well, then what? When they grew out of being disappointed in love, then I was left again. I was not growing. I literally had to sit and decide who I was going to be. My daughter said to me one day, when we were moving and I promised them, you know, if you give mommy some time, I'm going to buy us a new house. We're going to move. And we walked in the space and we were looking around at the home and there was a walk-in closet. And she said, Oh, look, this is perfect. It's plenty of room for you to sit and cry. I thought, all of those years, I was hiding in the closet and crying, and they didn't hear me. And they didn't see me. But the truth was, they heard it, they saw it, and it concerned them. And I had to decide who, who, was, the, who was I going to be for them to see. And, and I have to be honest, I, I didn't know. I, I had never been anyone that I wanted to be. I'd been everything that I was told to be. A good daughter, a good friend, um, a good student, a good teacher. I'd never made a choice for me. This is where you're gonna go to school. This is how you bank. This is where, how you drive. This is what you should drive. This is what you should like. I liked it because I was told to like it. And I, and I, I existed in that space proudly and to find yourself at 37 years old not knowing you i went only not into a season of celibacy abstinence bankruptcy and when i say bankrupt i bankrupted i wiped away everything i knew the way I walked, the way I talked, I, because if it wasn't what I decided I was, I didn't do it. I literally found myself saying, no, that's not from you. That's from someone else. Don't put that on. I stopped shopping at the stores I went to. If it did not come from goodwill, I wouldn't put it on because I didn't even know the stores I liked. So at least in Goodwill, it was every store. So I started going everywhere trying to figure me out. I dated myself. I talked to myself. I read every book about what it meant to be me. I, I asked my daughters, and I keep this list. I have 10 questions. Tell mommy about me. To see who I portrayed myself to be in front of them. And I really wanted me. And I remember I wrote in my journal, you know, God, I will not 
find nor have what I want in life until I become the woman you've called me to be. And I wrote, help me. And the truth is, he was always there for me. I was the one. And you would think in this moment, you're like, okay, you finally admitted, you finally said, okay, God, I'm here and I'm available. And it went quiet, y'all. I mean, silent, y'all. I mean, every little thing, the job that I loved, oh, it went away. The friends that I'd had forever, oh, they went away. That one man that was always the one you hold out for and he had held out for you, I mean, he went away so fast, took it away. And it was just me and God. For three years, I sat in silence. To the point that when I started to even believe that I was going to go out, I fell ill and my illness prevented me from interacting. I literally felt uncomfortable outside of a space of being in God's house or being surrounded by his word and sitting still. If it wasn't with him, my flesh couldn't do it. I, I didn't even understand it. And so I stopped trying to understand it. I just sat in it. I started to revel in my conversations with Jesus Christ. And I said, but Lord, now I'm 40. What you want me to do? You want me to start over? Who starts over? Who, who finds themselves and reinvents and who believes? And he said, reinvent, look at you. You're, you've always been there. You've just been hiding behind who you thought you needed to be. The perception of me was better than me. But if you knew me and if you came in my home and if you're around me, you like me. I like me. But the perception is what I fought for. The perception was better. Oh, you guys, I'm fine. My ex-husband and I were wonderful. We're great friends. We're co-parents. No, this does not hurt at all. Yeah, it hurt. It, it more than hurt. I was devastated. I, I wanted my friend back. I understood our marriage didn't work, but my friend, I wanted my friend back. I wanted to laugh with people. I wanted to share experiences. Although we didn't work as a couple or we didn't work as coworkers, we, we could work as church members, people who saw each other in the grocery store. But I created that. Because see, my wounds made me hurt other people. My wounds made me have new rules for life. My wounds made me reject moments. And my fear kept me out of rooms that were open for me. And then I blame my friends. I, you should have helped me. You could have contributed. You could have put me there. I had everything I needed to be there. I kept me out. So I decided, where do you want to be? What do you want to do? I walked away from everything. I walked away from my job. I... I did nothing. I sat still. I've always loved being a photographer. I've always loved taking pictures because I survived two hurricanes and I lost everything. And the one thing that broke my mother's heart the most was the loss of her pictures. So pictures became so important, capturing smiles, capturing laughs. Not the best, I'm self-taught. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. I've got some great mentors. But what I can do is capture a moment of just God's movement. And my church was in need of a photographer. What my church didn't know was I was not working. And they said, well, can you, can you come take pictures? Sure. They didn't offer me a job, y'all. I would go every Sunday and take pictures and turn in what I needed. No work a year, it was the most incredible experience of my life. 
to not only be in the sanctuary during this moment of God's movement, but to then come home and have those moments personally reach and, and share them and, and talk and watch pain and disappointment, watch joy, watch survival, overcoming. Grateful, y'all. And every Sunday, every Sunday, someone would tap me. You take pictures? And they'd ask me for my phone number. Every Sunday, can I hire you? And I promise you, they would hire me Monday to take a picture for a light bill due Thursday. They would hire me Tuesday to take a picture for lunch money for Friday. You know, that, that's how God would work. It, me trusting him. And I would just look around like, Lord, did you do that? To the point that they would book a session with me for the exact dollar amount of my car note. What? Okay, Lord. I started seeing myself different. I started loving me. Just for me. No badge. So every badge I put on my sash, I started taking it off. Because I'm not a good mom because I make lunch and I show up at the school. Because some days I don't make the lunch. And some days I can't be at the school. I'm a good mom because I love them. And, and even when they don't like me, they love me. I'm, I'm a good friend, not because I show up to dinner and I buy you something. I'm a good friend because my prayer includes you, even when you don't include me. That's not what God called of me. Um, so I started rewriting what I meant to me. Every day, I would have to write seven things that I liked about me. And I have to tell you, for the first 30 days, I literally wrote, I like me, because I didn't like me. I loved me, and I loved me because I wanted to be on this planet for my children. But I just didn't like Goldie for Goldie. I wasn't enough. And I, and I started to like me. I like me because I like my smile. I like me because I like talking to people. I like me because me is enough. I like me because God picked me to pour into somebody else. I like me. And then I went from I like me to I love me. And I went from I love me to I trust me. And I believe in me. And I honor me. And then I got to I forgive me. Me forgiving me changed my life. when I forgave myself for making the mistake, when I forgave myself for not forgiving, when I forgave myself for not knowing or knowing and not doing different, when I forgave me, my life changed. But again, five years later, at 45 years old, in the middle of a pandemic, this not my quiet season. Me and God been quiet together. He's been pulled me away. It was necessary. I'm not working. Photography stops. My studio is in home. But I'm working. I'm taking care of me. I'm taking care of my children. God is providing. I'm speaking life into me. I'm speaking life into others. The minute I stopped letting fear hold me hostage and I started dealing with the insecurities of my fears, my life changed. And my perception of me became my praise report. Every day. Every day. Katrina's Freedom by Design movement is not just about creating a financial, getting into business. It, it is choosing to free yourself to move in a way that God has already ordained for you. It is you letting go of the reins 
and letting him lead. He has a will for your life like no other. I don't pray and ask God for stuff. My prayer every day is that your will be done because anything else means that I know better than him. No, ma'am. I want your will. When great things happen, I am grateful, but I still want your will for my life. When a great man shows up and he is amazing, I want your will for my life. I do. Because anything else, that's me. I don't, I don't want to be in charge. I did that, and, and I see where it got me. I want his will for my life. I want, I want his freedom by his design every day. Every day. So that's what I work for. If I don't understand it, I may not believe in it in me in the moment, but I love me and I like me and because he loves me. And he tells me every day. He tells me every day, all day. And my response is, I know you do. When I get a bill that I know I can't pay, I love you, I know you do. When somebody walks out of my life, when I don't understand and I want them to say, I love you, I know you do. So I trust you. I trust you, Lord, with all that I have, with all that I know and don't know. My only desire for anyone listening to take away is the love you're looking for is inside of you. And it is wrapped in God's love. I promise you, it is, you open it up and it will fill you up and it will move in you like every vein pumping blood through your body. So no matter what goes away, what comes, what you receive, what you don't receive, what they've told you need to be at this age, you need to have this, you should have been, why don't you have kids, you should have, you need more kids, your people should, none of that matters. You are on the wake up list this morning. You give God praise and you go after it. And you go after it with the intention of loving yourself in it. That's it, that, that's it y'all. You, you go after it, you know. And before you lay your head to sleep at night, you tell God, thank you. And I love you, God, because I know you love me. And you get up and you do it all over again. There's nothing, no rhymes, no reasons. I'm still trying every day. I mean, financially, I'm back. I make it like everybody else. God keeps giving me, I have another business, but I got to do the work. I got to get up and put in the work. Nothing is free. Nothing is easy. Nothing is given to you except God's grace. So that's all I work for is grace. His grace. So I, can, so I can do it again. So whenever somebody says, oh, you're doing great, but God, not me. Four degrees later, but God, not me. Oh, you're so nice, mm -mm. but God, not me. I wasn't always nice. Girl, you're so sweet, mm -mm 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 -mm. that's God. I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry too, because the same grace he gave me, I'm gonna give you and I pray somebody give me. So, so in this space, I, I'm so grateful for his design for my life. I'm so grateful that he never took his hands off me. Even when I turned my back privately on him and publicly praised him. Because a Facebook post is easy, but a prayer on your knees is the toughest thing you'll do. You know, um, I pray that you all go forward and be great. I pray, I wish I could see you all and we could all hug and laugh and, and be, but, but know that your slide into God's greatness, just get on it. Let go. Stop trying to break your fall. Fall so you can get up and look to the heavens and go where he wants you to go. And, and don't be fearful because that insecurity, those are, those are speed bumps. 
Those are roadblocks. No, take that fear and fill your tank up and fight for it. Take, take that fear and every fear, attach it to God's word. I doubt it. Go find God's word. Nope. Because anything that you cannot attach God's word to, that's not of him. Let it go. That's not of him. So if I can't put God's word on it, not looking back. Not even going to worry about it. I, I thank you all. I thank you, thank you, thank you all for letting me share this space. I pray your peace and I pray your prosperity here and forevermore. Be good to yourself every day and all day. And may you pray for me as I pray for you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. I do. I do. All right. Thank you so much, Goldie. Let me come and um, get my little thing going. I got notes. I, this chat was blowing up while you were talking. It's still blowing up as we're uh, as you wrapped up. Guys, I hope that you have the notes I have because we started with sliding in. I was like, Lord, she is all in my house, in my room on this morning. I'm like, okay, I got to get it together. Um, just understanding that we are not, and let me make sure I have everybody muted. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so we are not trying to be perfect in this season because we're never going to be perfect. We have to walk and whatever he has for us, Goldie talked about uh, moving forward fearfully. Some of us are stuck in places. We're stuck in our house and we're actually liking being stuck in the house because we're trying to hide what's going on. I heard her talk about um, being, I am so many people, you know, being everything for everybody else. I know a lot of you guys resonated with it because I watched it as it began to blow up as she began to tell her story. And see the piece of it is you got to hear a few minutes of it I actually got to see it because I knew her before, during, and all of that time. So to see the woman who she is today is a awesome thing. And for her to be able to, for us to look at each other, sometimes it's like looking in a mirror. And sometimes that mirror hurts. And she talked this morning and, you know, we were back and forth about how heavy she was. But I know that God used you this morning and I'm excited about how you were vulnerable and somebody else was touched. I was getting text messages while you were talking saying, thank you for being obedient. So please understand that as we prepare to speak in front of people and we get nervous, somebody else is waiting like a sponge for that thing to come. And today you were what many people needed. So I appreciate you, my friend. She is not just the person I know. She is truly, and you guys know I talk about levels of friends. She is my friend, like my friend friend. So I love you, Goldie. Thank you so much. And now I get to go to our next speaker. So you guys better get ready. I don't have to tell you about the chat because I see you out all going up. So Goldie, you might want to go over there and look at that chat because that thing is going right about. Now it's still going as I'm looking at it. Our next speaker is another woman of power, woman of God. She is near and dear to my heart. I met her as a result of a business opportunity, but she is my friend. When I need, I can reach out to her. And I'm not talking about financial need and think when I need, when I am at my lowest, when I am like, Lord, what do I do? Please help me. I'm so grateful that he puts the right people around me. My friend is Minister Leanna Jackson. She is a lover of God and his word, first and foremost. Let me say that. She's a wife, a mother, and a Gigi. She has love for family reading. She is the founder and creator of Victoria's Vegan. So I want you guys to make sure you follow her on Facebook, um, which is a health and wellness blog created to help others to eat and live, um, you know, to live their version, to live their lives eating, not eating to live so to speak and she is six months yes drum roll six months away from earning her doctoral degree in educational ministry so guys i'm excited about that and i'm excited to introduce my friend and she is going to speak from the topic of knock knock it's the great physician please help me welcome minister leanna jackson leanna are you there i am here wow Man, when I tell you God is so amazing, just 
from the beginning of this, from the prayer that we prayed together as the presenters and, and speakers and leaders of this call, and how God works so intimately weaving things together when he wants his message brought forth. It's amazing. Dr. Flukas, thank you for the invite. I'm so humbled and honored. I get excited about speaking about this God and this Jesus that I serve. Um, you already said a few things that are in what I wanted to share, what I wrote down. It's confirmation. Goldie, oh my goodness. All the things she said about love and about God and how he is her rock. So I'm just going to share y'all just my story, a little bit of how I came to know this great physician. What does that mean to us? What does that mean in the big scheme of our lives and even where we are right now? And just share a little bit about him, him. Knock, knock, it's the great physician. My story, in 1975, I was 14 years old. I started going to this church, y'all, with the main reason being, I like this boy named David Jackson. And that's where he went to church, and that's where I was going. Very active in youth ministry, having so much fun with my friends, singing in the choir, going on trips, having fun youth nights, learning about God and Jesus. But somehow, somehow, it didn't really sink in who he was and how I fit into his plan. See, I was still getting high, doing the things that teenagers do, but I was going to church. But one Saturday youth night, my pastor at the time, this is 1975, I'm aging myself, 14 years old, he played this movie called The Thief Night. And it was about this teenage girl who was hearing the plan of salvation every Sunday, every Sunday. And she would want to go up, but she didn't go up. She didn't make the decision, so she was left behind. You can find a thief in the night on YouTube. She heard the call and she didn't respond. And suddenly, I realized that I heard it every Sunday and my heart wasn't even sensitive to it. So it came and went, came and went. After that movie, y'all, I was so scared. 14 years old, teenager. After that movie, I was so scared. I realized my condition. I realized, man, right now, if God was to come back, I ain't ready for him. I would be left behind. Man, I walked home thinking, I don't want to be left behind. I went to sleep saying, God, I don't want to be left behind. What do I do? No answer. I didn't sleep good. That Sunday, the youth choir had to sing. I was in the youth choir. Me and my friends were singing. I was in the choir box with my green robe and my yellow sash. Yeah, we had robes back then. And I went through the service with my mind focused on God, what do I do? The message was preached and it sounded like Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, wah, wah. I didn't hear anything. I wanted to know what to do. And that's all that I was focused on. God, I thought, why aren't you telling me what to do? Until I heard the words, if you were to die today, and you're not sure if you would be in eternity with God, and you want to be sure by accepting Jesus Christ into your heart, come forward. Everything, everything became real and loud. That was it. I knew exactly what to do. Man, I jumped up with tears rolling down my face. My body could hardly keep up with my feet and ran to my pastor with my arms raised up in my heart. My heart is ready. It was ready to accept Jesus, and I accepted him into my heart. My heart, hear me, was changed and transformed. The Lord has unequivocally been the lover of my heart and soul ever since. And as I came to know him more and more, I understood that though my sin was great, his love was greater. 
So fast forward to today, and we find ourselves in this strange territory, in a place in history that we've never experienced, quarantine, sheltered in place, social distancing, masks, gloves, can't get married, can't graduate, can't bury our loved ones the way we want to, can't go to school or work, putting our lives on the line at work because we have to work. Some of us are feeling lonelier than we've ever felt. Some of us need a break and are thankful for the break. Wishing God would hurry up and fix this terrible mess man has got us in. When will things be normal again? What is our new normal? Sometimes, sometimes we come to God so casually with no real sense of his great awesome power of who he really is no real respectful and reverent fear of his almighty loving powerfulness that's a leanna word but what would happen what would change if god really visited this place right now and we realized we were in the presence of the creator of the heaven and earth and everything in it, the redeemer. Somebody said earlier, the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. I would think there might be some knees knocking, some hearts fluttering like mine right now. Some of us would fall on our faces and truly glorify him. Maybe some of us would not know what to do and find ourselves questioning our lives and even holding our heads down low. Like me at 14, you have to ask yourself, where do I stand? What is really my position? Where am I standing? Is one foot in, one foot out? I only give God the hard parts of my life and I keep the parts that I don't want to give up for him? What is the condition of my heart? Do you know the brain is not mentioned once in scripture, but the heart is cited 826 times. God is concerned with your heart, but I got good news. good news. He's here with us right now, knowing everything that's going on in our lives, knowing right now what's happening in each of our homes and in each of our situations and circumstances. Knock, knock. It's the great physician. It's a house call to you. Listen, back in the day when house calls or house visits, Dr. Flukas mentioned it. House visits by the doc, they were a common part of life. Folks waited with great expectancy and anticipation that the doc would take care of whatever was ailing them or tell them how they could get well again, how they could heal what was broken or bruised or shattered. They placed all of their hope in the doc's ability to fix whatever ailed them, they believed wholeheartedly he had a diagnosis and treatment for whatever ailed them. If the doc told them there was nothing more he could do, all hope was lost and they prepared for the worst. They did whatever the doc told them to do, but that doctor only treated the physical condition. That's it. There's one profound and distinct difference between that physician and the great physician. The profound difference is that the great physician treats the whole person. Knock, knock, it's the great physician. God is knocking at the door of your heart saying, I want your whole heart, not half of it, not a corner of it, not three quarters of it, but your whole heart. I got you. I know your pain. If you never felt pain, then how would you know that I'm a healer? If you never went through difficulty, how would you know that I'm a deliverer? If you never had a trial, how would you call yourself an overcomer? If you never felt sadness, how would you know that I'm a comforter? If you never made a mistake, how would you know that I'm forgiving? If you never were in trouble, how would you know that I'll come to your rescue? If you never were broken, how would you know that I can make you whole? If you never had a problem, how would you know that I solved them? If you never had any suffering, then how would you know that what I went through? If you never went through the fire, how would you become pure? If you never gave up things for me how would you know that i 
can provide all things for you. If I gave you all things, how would you appreciate them? If I never corrected you, how would you know that I love you? If you had all power, how would you learn to depend on me? If your life was perfect, then what would you need me for? Not, not. It's the great physician. He's here to check the condition of your heart. How? By his Holy Spirit. He's here right now. We know that not by our feelings, but by our faith. God is here. See, at 14, I knew that all of the Lord Jesus Christ was mine at the moment I accepted him in my heart. But I realized later in my life and even now that I possess only as much of him as by my faith and what I claim my faith to be. God does not make house calls just to give us goosebumps or to make us do weird things, but he's here. It's a house call. God wants to know the condition of your heart. Are you really dependent on him? Stop trying to handle things. Goldie said it. She had to surrender. Psalm 147 11 says, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his mercy. There may be some pressing need on your heart right now, some desperate situation that you need help with, some pain or hurt that you need comfort or healing. If you fear God, you know you need his help. You know you need his compass. Some of us are burdened with loss of a job, the stress of working from home, ensuring our kids are taking care of us. Some of us have two-parent homes and it's supposed to be easier and it isn't. Some of us are single parents and it's crazy right now. Some of us are feeling lonelier than we've ever been. And some of us are loving every minute of this much needed break and enjoying this time. Some of us are getting to know ourselves really for the first time in a long time, getting to know our spouse, our children, our limitation, discovering new endeavors writing screenplays, writing books, serving others. Where have you put me in this time, God is saying? Lean on me more, trust in me more, be anxious for nothing. Don't you know I'm on duty 24-7, 365 days a year? You never need to make an appointment. You never have to wait. I'll take all the time you need. No problem is too hard for me. He always makes the right diagnosis, even when you don't know what the problem is. He can heal you physically, emotionally, spiritually. He don't charge no fees, y'all. He never lost a patient. The profound difference, remember what I said, the great physician treats the whole person. When you begin to see God as a physician, you'll have a better understanding of how he can help you. Your health, your very life is in his hands. You're safe in his hands. They're skilled. They're gentle. They're forgiving. Because God sent his son, Jesus. Jesus goes to the people. If you look at scripture and the people come to him, the outcome was always life and not just renewed life or extended life, but eternal life. Knock, knock. It's the great physician. Is God trying to break through to you? Is he waking you up to a specific calling? Do you need to humble yourself before God? Get in a posture to hear, really hear from God? God wants to know, can you really deny what you want? Do you really, I mean, really believe that he created you and has the best plan for you? Or maybe, just maybe, you've heard from God, you know the call of God upon your life, but you have failed to put it in action. Do you need to get serious about God by truly surrendering your heart to his will in his way? Knock, knock. It's the great physician. In the midst of this pandemic, this house call is truly a way for God to say, don't miss what I'm trying to wake you up to. Don't miss what I'm trying to wake up in you. My visits always change the destiny of the person 
I'm trying to grab, the heart I'm trying to get. Every house my son went into, people changed. God is saying, stand up. He's waiting to give you orders. Orders that are designed specifically for you and nobody else. Open up. Is God far away or close to you? Surrender your heart completely to him and let him make you healthy and whole. Listen up. God only knows if you really mean it. He only knows if you really mean it. Goldie said it in silence. In public, she prayed in silence. That's where it counts. He only knows. Listen with your heart. Be compassionate with yourself and flexible with yourself. Forgive yourself and others and love who you are becoming through him. Oz Guinness said this, and I'm almost done, y'all. God calls us to himself so decisively that everything we are, everything we do, and everything we have is invested with a special devotion and vigor, lived out as a response to his summons, to his calling and service. Knock, knock. The great physician is here. He's waiting for you with all, with God, all things are possible. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who he is. So whatever you got to do this week, listen to these, these speakers and, and what the notes that you're taking and decide to change your heart. Do make steps to change your heart. Pray more. Pray with your husband. Pray with your children. Pray with a partner. Read your word. Really look in the mirror and ask yourself, is my heart totally surrendered to the great physician? And God, whatever I need, whatever it is that you have called me to do, then I will do and surrender to you. Knock, knock. It's the great physician. Let's see. Oh my God, Leanna, Leanna, Leanna. I need you to go back to and take a look at that chat because it is also blowing up. Guys, Leanna, um, as I was taking my notes, Leanna said something um, that really resonated with me because she was talking about the heart. And it's so interesting that um, a friend of mine who's on today, she shared something with us the other day and it spoke to the heart. So I want to ask us, and of course, it's a rhetorical question, but how is your heart? Because, you know, people often ask us, Leanna, how are we doing? How are you doing? And what we say, we, I'm fine. I'm good. Even when we go to the doctor, we say, I'm fine. I'm good. But the great doctor really, really knows what's going on with us. So we can't just shuck and jive him. We can't just play around with him. So what is the condition of your heart in this season? And I want us to really think about that. Think about the questions that, you know, we ask ourselves because he already knows the answer. He is waiting on us to just turn it over to him. And as she said, there's going to be no fee. That you don't have to worry about paying for it because he already paid for it. That's taken care of. He is just waiting on us to walk, to be obedient. So where have you put him in this season as you're checking off your list, as you're doing what you need to do, as you're doing all of these things? Where are you with him as it relates to your heart, as it relates to your mind? Guys, I'm super excited and um, I'm sitting here, my notes, my pages are filling up. I'm like, okay, I need their real notes. I want them to send the real notes to me because I, I just, I'm excited on the inside. And as much as I have set this house call up being obedient for others, I need it. Everything that has been spoken so far, the words that have been said, I need it in this season where I am in my life. And I am certain that the next individual that I'm about to bring up, he is going to definitely close us out and um, bring a closure to our third speaker, at least our third um, speaker. I'm looking at time, I'm like, Lord, please let him stay on. This gentleman is one of nine children. He was born in Oklahoma City. Um, and actually, some of you may know him, you may not, but he was actually in a gospel and R&B group. He and three 
of his five brothers. They began touring and they actually landed a major recording um, deal and they moved here to Atlanta um, around the Olympics in about 1996. Now this gentleman has a servant heart and he gets it from his mom. Um, he has served his community in law enforcement. He was a police detective. He did a, quite a few other things. He's an entrepreneur and executive director with Connect. He's been recognized um, within that um, environment as being a rising star, power of leadership um, recipient. He is my brother, definitely from another mother. He is a powerful individual. I love him so much because he can always bring a word and he can always bring laughter. So I am going to go ahead and I am going to find my brother from another mother, none other than Mr. Martin Augustine. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? I'm hoping that uh, that I'm heard uh, here. All I can say is, wow, what an amazing, 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 amazing afternoon. Um, the story Goldie, oh my goodness. I, I'm still trying to work out my chill bumps that you, um, that you had given me. What an amazing story and so heartfelt and transparent. And, and Leanne, of course, I see why they call you preacher, minister, uh, uh, pastor, evangelist, whatever the accolades that go along with uh, you standing in front of uh, a pulpit and God's people absolutely understand it. And, and as I'm listening to what's going on today and rethinking my um, volunteering saying, yes, I'm like, I should have been more slated to be the usher than I am a speaker because all the words that need to be spoken have been spoken. So I'm sitting here trying to find how I fit into such a uh, awesome platform. And the only thing I could do is tell the story of my story. And here's, here's what, when, when this thing was offered to or uh, talked to me about by uh, Katrina, she was saying, just, tell your story and let let the men see that it's okay that they be used and so um as i start struggling because i said if i tell my story then i have to leave some transparencies on the table and i have to give people a look behind the curtain and see the things that compose to making my life the way it is. And, and, and I start saying, well, listen, I'm only going to say so much because I, you know, I got this facade or this persona that I gotta be. But the more I thought about it and more I started looking and listening um, there, God was saying, you gotta let the men know it's okay. So as she talked about where I came from. So here I am, I'm number eight of nine. There's nine, raised by a single mother in Oklahoma. Experienced as many hardships as I think at one time I was asking God, are you giving me other people's hardships? Because things were hard to be a, a boy in, in a family raised by a single mom without an education, without a, without a job, without career, and see that I've got five brothers and three sisters and to live the life that we live and y'all gotta get this i grew up in in hard times but the one thing that i it, it took me until i was of school age until i was middle school to realize that we were poor because even though we did not have and i'm not talking about any of that uh and then that TV poor where they can say cut and you start over. I'm talking about walking in houses where there was no lights and going into houses where there was no food and going and getting hand-me-downs from four other brothers uh, there by the time it got to me, it was just threads. I'm, not, I'm talking about a hardship but even with the hardship and even with all the lack that we had, we didn't know we were poor because of the love that sat in our house. And I can remember at an early age when, when God began to work on Martin, I used to, I used to complain and I used to pray and I, cause I would always ask the question of God, why me? Why are you putting me 
in this situation because I'm looking at eight other kids that don't seem to share the same issues that I'm having when it came to when it came to being just lackadaisical it seemed like everybody else in the house could be but me when it seemed to be complacent it seemed like everybody else's complacency was the way to go but I couldn't find complacency so I remember I would ask and I would pray Lord just let me be like the rest of them but my entire life, there was this thing that was inside of me that says, you can't be like everybody else because I didn't call you to be everybody else. Now, that only sounded good when I became an adult, but as a child, there were many tears that were cried because I was saying, why is it that I can't just be like my brothers? I'm watching them, and I'm seeing, and I'm admiring where they are, and I'm admiring how free they seem to be but it was always always circled around so when this single mother raised nine children the only place she could raise us was in a church uh, it was my mom was the was the pianist of the church we were the vocals there there's a choir of about 30 people but only four people singing it was me and my brothers and we when the church opened we were there when the church needed to be cleaned. We were there when the church was closed. I almost thought at time we were walk, walking around in shifts guarding the church. We were at the church for so many hours of so many days. And that was back in the day when they had church, y'all, where it was church on Monday, YPWW. Uh, some of the acronyms for church, I didn't even know what it was. I just knew, hey, listen, come on, go from school. We on our way to church. And I did not understand that when the Bible says that raise them in the way that they would go. And when they got older, they wouldn't part from it. And again, as my journey began to walk and we began to, like uh, Katrina said, we ended up, you know, being in this music. And just like most men just like most kids just like most adolescents because of all the lack because i looked at what god had apparently held for me and gave to so many other people i masked so many of my emotions with anger y'all it's y'all see the smile right now and you see the kind heart and you see but I, i'm borrowing from what i saw heard from uh from goldie and saying that ain't always how it was was been i would rather fight you than say hello so just like most men i masked my angers with fear and then i masked my insecurity with anger uh that's what i mean uh, so uh my 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 insecurities i masked with anger in my 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 lack of i masked with anger and when i was angry i masked it with anger i was just mad for no reason uh some people used to say you got little man syndrome well, if that was a, an actual thing, I actually had it because I was mad at everybody. But more importantly, I could, was trying to make sense out of what God was doing to me by saying, if you're saying you called me, if you're saying you chose me, why does the road that I travel seem to be the one that has the most chaos in it? And God was there, and it wasn't until now, as we were we were getting into this place, and Trina was saying, "Well, let's just talk about whatever. It don't have to just be about connect." I was like, "Well, that takes that backdrop. It doesn't just have to be about the gospel. What is it? Bring something to the table so that other people understand. It's okay to say I'm hurting. It's okay to say that it was painful. It's okay to say I'm confused." Used. It's okay to say that I don't really know what I'm doing right now because it does not matter if you are obedient, God will bring you to the place where you should be. So here I am and said, what would I say? And, and, and I tried not to be a preacher today because you had a minister on before and you had such a powerful word, but God told me to talk about the practical thinking. How practical can we be in a place that we're Un, we're unsure of. So here's the thing that when, and I heard everybody talking and I heard Trina talking about this thing here by talking about this social distancing. Y'all don't understand. Martin is passionate about what Martin is passionate about. And here I am, a social being. My whole life has been built for servitude. My whole life, I've given to people because I learned from this woman. There would be times as a child that we went without eating for days. And I did not understand that when it 
we finally got something to eat. I uh, watched this woman who I call mama take half of what we had and took it down the street to someone else. And in again, all that I didn't understand, I treated it with anger. Now I'm mad at the neighbors because how dare you take something out of our house when we worked so hard and we went so long without it. Why would you take food out of our mouth and send it to somebody else? And the whole time, my mom would always say, because no matter what, and I hope everybody gets this, no matter what, it is always somebody doing worse than you are. It, no matter what, there's always room to be a blessing to someone else. So just like most of the people on this call, I used to always say, Lord, bless me to be a blessing to someone else. That was my adult prayer. Lord, I just want you to use me. Lord, just bless me so that I can bless others. And here we are with this music contract. And y'all got to understand, this was no little contract. They gave us a huge contract, or so we thought. So here's my prayer going to Atlanta, Georgia. Lord, bless me to be a blessing to someone else. As I understood me going to be rich and I will be able to give money to someone else. But God saw fit to not allow that to be because he says, if I gave you the money, you gave it to someone else, you think you were being charitable and that's not what your prayer was. Your prayer was to be a blessing to someone else. So let me show you how to bless people as an example of what I've done for you. So here we are. So God says in this practical thinking that you want to talk about, this social distancing does not mean social isolation. We have confused this thing. Here we are in the middle of a pandemic. Here we are in this thing where we're confused, scared. Don't want to say that we're scared, concerned. There are people that don't want to go outside. Understanding social distancing only means that we got to stay six feet, 12 feet, or whatever your prescribed distance is. But to be socially isolated is dangerous because that's what they do when they're punished. So here the whole country ends up being put under house arrest and we're trying to figure out how is in the world can we make sense out of a life we don't know nothing about. Here we are in a place where we have a new norm. The life that we had in 2019, we'll never see it again because of all that's happened with us we have got to understand there are people hurting. So when Trina talked about this, I didn't understand the house call until today. There are people who have decided instead of being social distant, I'll be socially isolated. When you become social isolated, you leave room for the enemy to make you think your value is nothing. You leave room for the enemy to make you think that you are less than, that nobody will miss you, nobody cares, nobody's concerned. And you'll begin to think what this pandemic did was allow us to understand how vulnerable we are. I'm one of those men, I'm one of those people who had that prideful thing that says, I don't need nobody. I've gone through enough, I've done enough, I've survived some outcomes that has crumbled some people and I don't need nobody else. But this pandemic that God has allowed for us to go through has shown those vulnerabilities for all the saying, I don't need somebody, stop telling that lie. We need somebody because we are a social people. We were made to communicate. We were made to, to uh, be iron, to shop in iron. Uh, we were in this, on this God zone, this platform, this other platform that God has made uh, uh, big for, for me in my life at this time here. And we were talking about the fruit. And the Bible says that we will be known by the fruit we bear. And as we talked about this, fruit here. And it was a segment that I had and God had to work on me this because people say, you know, we're known by the fruit that we have. And when we look at this ourselves as a tree, understanding a tree of fruit will feed hundreds. That fruit that you bear, whatever it is that you're given, whatever gifts God given to you, gave it to you to birth so that you would be able to feed other people. But then we learn through that message or through that conversation that my tree is just a tree by itself. But when I put my tree with other trees, it becomes an orchard. So where I was able to feed hundreds, now I'm able to feed 
thousands. Now I'm able to feed multitudes because of where we are as a family. They always say that there's a village. It takes a village to raise a child. I prescribe to that because it just makes sense. But what they don't stop, where the short, the story stops short, is that you get to choose the village that you're going to raise your child in. So here we are with our subliminal child trying to understand how to make sense out of nothing. I hear people saying, try to make a dollar out of 15 cents. Let me help you out. A dollar is just a dollar. If it don't make sense, it don't make sense. So here's how this thing works. We are in a place where we are got to lean on each other to get through what this thing is called this pandemic. So here we are on this call and I got to talk about this because this, this thing feeds me. So here we are and somebody mentioned there that they that we're watching Life Passes By and it took me to a song. I almost sung it for y'all today, but I ain't going to do it. So here's, here's how this, that thing goes. It says that you, why would you take a seat on the sideline of the thing you call your life? You're watching your life pass by because you can't make sense out of it. You're watching your life pass by because you're saying, I'm afraid. We're being inundated with fear. We're being overwhelmed with fear. We've been told, but the one thing I know more than anything else is God ordained this time. Y'all think y'all happen to get on a call on a Saturday morning at 12 o'clock just by happenstance? You got on this call because you were ordained to be on it because God says, I need to come see about you. And since I don't write on walls anymore, I'll do it by freedom by design. I will allow a group of people to come see about you just so that you know you're not alone. You're not, you're social distance, but not socially isolated. Guys, you got to understand, if we don't wrap our hands around each other, love on each other from the experiences that we've had, that I've had, because men, yeah, I got to only talk to you, we'll die and go to our grave before we tell one person that it hurts. When it hurts, they say men cry in the dark. I must have didn't get the memo because I'll cry out loud. It don't matter. When it hurts, it hurts. When I'm confused, I'm confused. I just need somebody to get me to the place where I can get the answers, where I can get the love, where I can get the help that I need. So here we are in this pandemic, in this place, and we're trying to do, and God is telling me, family, let's use practical thinking. Don't, don't, don't socially isolate yourself trying to be social distance. This is a platform, so here's how I got to give it back to our host. And, and I started trying to dissect this platform that she has. She's such an amazing woman. And I hear this thing called Freedom by Design. And God kept me up last night with this Freedom by Design because the word, the last time I heard that freedom in such a passionate way, it was, I was hearing somebody says, freedom by any means necessary. And then I started thinking about if this thing is freedom by design, let me give an alternate term to freedom by design and say life by design. When they open the doors and they come back up, what design do you have for what's left of your life? We've been locked up what seems to be for ages. Now it's only been three months. I swear I feel like I've been on lockdown for three years. So here you are. What does freedom by life look like for you? What are we going to do? Last thing I'm saying, everybody says, listen, Lord, I'll give my life to you tomorrow. Lord, here's what I'll do. I'll start my business tomorrow. Lord, here I'll do. I'll be kind tomorrow. Lord, here's what I'll do. I'll do the things that you put in my life. I'll do that tomorrow. Here's my notice that I got to serve to everybody today. Today is the tomorrow you were talking about yesterday. You have to do what's good for you today, right now, in this time. Here's what I got to give to the to this platform. Dr. Flukas, thank you so much for allowing me for a short period of time just to share a snake bit of this house call. Thank you for Freedom by Design. Give it back to you. All right, all right, all right. Thank you so much, Martin. I appreciate that. It was blowing up. So if you want to go look in the chat right now, just like I'm telling everybody else, because, you know, he started off talking about why, Lord? How many of us have asked that question? Come on, let's be transparent. Why me? 
why, why, why? You know, at a certain point in my life, I stopped asking the why and, say, and start saying, what do you want me to do? So that why I was definitely there and just hearing the backdrop of his story, because I knew some of it, but I didn't know all of it. And I can just imagine as a child how difficult that is, you know, when you see your parent or your mom giving to other people, knowing that you need them and just having and growing up and being able to say, you know what, I got good perspective because some of us, God hasn't given us what he is ready to, it wants to give us right now in this season because we wouldn't be ready for it. Because just like he said, we would think we were doing charity to somebody instead of being able to extend the grace that we need to be given. We would think that we're above and not beneath, but that's not the case. Then he started talking about that thing that really resonates with me, which is that social distancing. But you know what? People are isolating themselves. We can be physically distant, but we need to connect. We need to be with each other. And I don't think, Martin, that uh, you can use a better analogy than when you talked about all of us having our gifts, which will bear fruit in their season. But when you come together with a Goldie Love, when you come together with a Minister Leanna Jackson, when you come together with a Martin Augustine, when you come together with a Bernadette Wright, when you come together with a Dr. Katrina Flukas, and we all put our gifts that are bearing fruit. Now we didn't went from a tree to a whole orchard. Boy, you better say it. I'm talking about, I had not got so excited over here. I'm like, we, we about to feed a bunch of people. So guys, on this afternoon, I know we are beyond our one o'clock time but i did want to leave you with just um something real brief i won't go into everything i was going to say because i feel like what needed to be said has been said but, but so many of us as we were children as i think about that whole analogy of the doctor coming to your house and seeing about you you know that was more about relationship you know the doctor had a relationship so they would come and they would check on you see you know, how, how you were doing. But as kids, I think about games we would play and we would love to play hide and seek. And some of us are still playing hide and seek right now in this season with him. But Leanna just said, knock, knock, it's the great physician. So he's coming. He knows that you're high and he knows that you're playing. You can, it makes no sense for us to see the doctor and not tell him the truth about what's going on when he's already gonna know. Just like if we went to the doctor and we said, oh, nothing's hurting or I'm okay, and they took our blood and it came back, they wouldn't know something's wrong. So it's no reason for us to play around. He's here, he is extending everything what we that we need, the healing. He's not saying I'm gonna help you, he's saying I'm going to heal you. That's what we're looking at. So on this afternoon, I'm gonna leave you with these six things that I want you to think about. Number one, God knows. We can't hide nothing from him. He will grant us all the grace and mercy that we need. Every morning we open our eyes, he's going to give us some fresh grace for that day. So we don't have to talk about tomorrow. We're dealing with today. He's going to take care of us. The second thing is he cares about each and every one of us. He sent his son, as Leanna spoke to, for us. For us in this day, May 16th, 2020. He sent his son for us. So we don't have to worry about that. He's going to give us the comfort that we need. We don't have to worry about how it looks, what it feels like. We don't have to worry about that. He sees us as we are with all, this all these clothes, this hat, this makeup, take it all away. He knows what's right here. He is not going to hold us to what we did in the past or who we were in the past. He's talking about right here, right now. He will provide. I know everybody on here knows that he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He's going to give us what we need in its sufficiency right here, right now. A lot of us in this season, as we've heard from Leanna, we've heard from Goldie and Martin, they had that thread of a lot of people are hurting because of lack. You don't have to worry about lack. He is our provider. All he's waiting on is you to say, you know what? I give it over to you. He wants us to stop with the checklist. Goldie told you she'd start taking the badges off her sash. Take your badges off. Put that checklist down. It's not about your checklist. It's not about your design. Freedom comes from his design. The void is filled by him. No man, no woman, not going to be able to do it. He wants the best for us. Understand that on that journey to success, he wants us to be successful. But many of us are stifling the success he wants for us because we're trying to go into a new season with old stuff. We're trying to take that old baggage and carry it and it's weighing you down. You weren't supposed to bring it. You're not who you were. You are who you are today, who he wants you to be. So don't worry about that. He'll give us what we need. Number five, um, as Leanna talked about that great doctor, all we have to do is 
pray and seek him. His healing touch, he is going to give it to us. And as I close, ladies and gentlemen, on this afternoon, he is going to deliver. His, the deliverance, you know, definitely often comes from us doing something wrong, and that's cool. He knows that. He knew we were not, not going to be right when we started. That's okay. But he is going to absolutely de deliver us and with a pure heart. So on this afternoon, I want to say thank you again to Bernadette, Goldie Love, Minister Leanna Jackson, Mr. Martin Augustine for joining me for this house call because I know we needed it. I know I needed it. I thank you so much. Each of my, um, each of the presenters that have been here with me this afternoon, they dropped their information, their social media information so that you can follow them. I know we have the Truth About Love. I know we have the Victorious Vegan. Um, and they're also on Facebook and social media. So if you would, um, ladies and gentlemen, drop your information in there. And you can also go to Freedom by Design, www.freedombydesign1.com. Um, I'm excited, guys. I don't know um, when the next event will be as it relates to this virtual platform, but I do know we have established a date for our Women of Power Tea Party, which was supposed to be in April. It has been scheduled for August the 15th. So we are prayerful that we will actually be able to have the event. So we're excited about that. We have 100 um, women that are already booked for that event. So we're going to see um, um, how God wants us to move. So we're excited about that. But stay tuned for the next event because I'm going to be obedient to what God is asking me to do in this season and in every season. I love you guys. Thanks for joining us. God bless you and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.